Hello everybody and this is Chaos with Chaos Esports Productions bringing you another Bronze to Masters League series game. Now this is not going to be your typical Bronze to Masters League series game in that this is actually a unranked game that I played. Uh, I didn't play any ranked uh, games with Terrans and I kind of feel felt like I needed to get at least one or two uh, Terran games out there. Um, I've been looking at a different strategy versus Terran and Protoss uh, lately. Um, I've been watching some in control and grubby streams over the past week, and I've come to find out that a lot of times, well, I guess one strategy that both of them tend to use uh, on occasion is a uh, kind of a DT play, um, and this is kind of just my take on a way to mix up my play. You know, generally versus uh, Terran, I've been playing a little bit more Stargate heavy and kind of want to give you guys some, you know, different strategies to look at, things to think about while you're playing, you know, because obviously there's more than one way to play this game. Um, so basically the point of these couple games, uh, I'll have another Terran game after this, um, the point of these two games are kind of just to give you kind of a proof of concept of a strategy and kind of my interpretation of it. So basically, one thing you see, you know, you can see one of two different things when you're uh, playing versus Terran. You can see, obviously, really, really heavy pressure, uh, which we'll actually see in the next game. And then, obviously, you have Terran players who play a little bit more on the passive side and basically just kind of sit in their base, get up a giant army, and then at around the 10-minute mark, they come and, you know, try to overwhelm you. So, basically, the point of this is we want to harass them just enough that we put them far enough behind that basically we can kind of do a multi-pronged attack and they just kind of have to choose how to split their army and then on top of that they have to know exactly where to scan in order to deal with one side of the you know fight equation so um in general it's very similar as far as the structure of the build as the stargate build where i get a relatively early uh second gas um just to note uh, i did kind of get a brief scout Let's see. I yeah, I do see one gas. So, uh, it, seeing that one gas means one of two things. He's either going for uh, really early reapers, or he's planning on teching very fast. So you got to be kind of cautious as to how you play, you know, play through it. Um, we obviously want to get a fairly, you know, decent army before we start teching up toward DTs, because obviously if we deal with any early pressure, that could you know bite us in the behind later on. So, at this point, just getting up, since, you know, after seeing that he has left, uh, I choose to go ahead and plant down my uh, Twilight Council, and now that the Stalker's out, I can kind of guarantee that he's not going to get back in. Um, I do go and check around just to make sure he didn't, like, try to, you know, build any bunkers or anything. You never know with Terran players. Um, and basically at this point, we're just continuing on getting probes and kind of sitting sitting happily in our base, kind of doing our own thing. Um, so obviously we're going to be getting on a couple more gateways, because obviously once the DT, once the Dark Shrine's done, we're going to want to have, you know, be able to warp in fairly quick. Um, and then at this point, you know, I, I probably should have done a better job of map control I probably should have sent this uh, soccer and zealot out to the middle just to keep tabs on what's going on in the field. Always, if you can hold, if you can hold a watchtower, always do it because you know obviously it gives you that much more indication of whether or not aggression is coming, and it it forces the you know your opponent to kind of have to go around the tower in order to get to your base, so it could slow down an attack. Just things to keep keep in mind. Um, so Cybernetics Core is down. I plant the Dark Shrine over here because if he chooses to scan my main, uh, the likelihood of him being able to see the Dark Shrine over here is probably slim to none. So him seeing this, he could probably see. So we, he puts plants down a scan, and obviously we, the the Dark Shrine is outside of his range. So you know we're not too worried. Now him seeing him seeing the Twilight Council should kind of indicate to him, you know, he has one of two thoughts in his mind, I would think. He would be thinking, well, he could be going Dark Shrine, or he could be going for a really early blink 
play because you know this map has a fairly big ridge here that I can you know kind of play with with blink um, and it looks like he's kind of anticipating some type of aggression so he's planning I don't that's kind of a far back bunker I don't know anyways so at this point we're just kind of building up a small little army uh, planting some pylons around the map just to get some vision because obviously if he comes around here with a, a drop we want to kind of get an idea of you know, if we're going to deal with any of that. Uh, and then I go ahead and plant down a fairly late Nexus. Um, against Terran, it's kind of okay to plant down a later Nexus. It's not like, yes, you're behind, but you're not, like, too far behind because you can just chrono boost out probes. Um, and kind of my twist on the DT play was I kind of wanted to play, you know, DT drops because, um, <laughs> personally, my APM is kind of a little bit lacking and by playing this way it forces me to to play a little faster um so anyways at this point just continuing on getting up probes and once this gets done i mean obviously we're still kind of building up a small army you know keeping our money is relatively low um a little i'm a little bit far you know behind in the oh <laughs> Yeah, my uh, <laughs> my girlfriend was over when I played this game, and she screamed. I forgot about that. Um, anyway, so once once the robotics facility gets up, immediately get out the robo or get out the uh, warp prism. And basically, since we know he has the middle, we choose to send it around, um, kind of in this you know random path to the back of his base. Um, he does come in and scan again, but obviously, since I haven't really planted down anything, he doesn't know what I'm doing. Um, Looks like he's queuing up some drops, so obviously things to worry about. Now, we go ahead and send a hallucinated phoenix, because, you know, we don't know anything that's going on. So we're, you know, a little bit worried. Now, we see him throwing down a, a really early third command center. And eh, 10 minute mark is actually, yeah, 10 minute mark is when he should be pushing out. But he's planning down, by pu planning down that cybernet, or that command center, he kind of limits himself a little bit. Um... And plus, if he were to try to push, uh, he'd be, you know, he wouldn't have as many units, basically, is what it all boils down to. Um, so, I push out with my army, and him seeing this, I don't know if he chooses to pull... He doesn't really react to it, so I guess it really didn't do anything. Now, I'm surprised he, he moved back his tank. That's kind of weird. Um, so... I uh, warped in some DTs, put it into the warp prism, and kind of is going to sit down here. Now, at this point, my money is sitting pretty high, and uh, I think, yeah, I choose to plant down several more gateways because my money is high, and I know I'm going to need to warp in stuff. So I take this army, and I attack at the front while I drop in the bait back, and, you know, I'm just trying to keep them from, like, triggering his attack thing. So basically, at this point, he's worried about this fight, um, and then I bring in the DTs and basically just trying, you know, basically just kind of poking him in both places. Um, he, ch he plants down a scan, but obviously misses, you know, three of the DTs and I've basically taken out his natural. So basically I've accomplished everything that I need to with that push because, you know, I've done significant amount of damage, uh, to his natural. He can't really do anything. Uh, and I'm actually sit still sitting here kind of taking stuff out. Um, I send one DT to take out the missile turret, um, and, you know, at this point, uh, I can just push in here and really not have any trouble, because at this point, he doesn't have a whole lot. He was trying to deal with all this, and he's still not mining. So basically, this type of strategy only works if he's not ready for this. You have to scout, you know, kind of with the hallucinated phoenix and make sure that he's, you know, not ready for it and then just kind of you know kind of poke and prod in both areas that way you know you have a clear vision that you're going to be able to get in and not you know not, not lose everything back here uh as you can see i saved the warp prism so that pretty much put me you know in a really good position um now i probably should have been getting well i guess i <laughs> should have changed my rally but you know, probes probes are doing pretty good back in the back at home. I could have probably expanded, but at this point, you know, I'm kind of like, well, uh, I've done enough damage. I can probably just go in and win. So uh, that's it for this first Terran game. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Feel free, uh, f feel free to um, 
Subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see more. Uh, go ahead and like if you also enjoyed it. Um, down in the description below, you will see links for my Twitch account, my Twitter account, and then the streams that I tend to watch. I tend to watch In Control, Grubby, and um, I don't remember who else I have down there. Anyways, the really good streams. Check them out. Um, I know they're pro players, so they're pretty good. And you know, for me, it gives me a really good sense of you know, here's the kind of strategies I want to look into. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next Terran game.